2014-15 school year. I know this is a really busy time for everyone, and getting to all 14 schools this year has been impossible to arrange. There is just so much going on at the school level and the supervisor level that there are a few times the entire staff is in any one building at the same time. Having to pull so many teachers out two days in a row is a reflection of how much is going on in our school system. Our new kindergarten assessment, our new math, social studies, and science programs at the middle school level, and a request for vertical articulation in areas such as music and world language have required two days of training for some staff. Principals have worked with us on ensuring you have time to work in your classroom. So please don't worry about that. You will have time. But as I said, an entire staff is seldom in the building at the same time, except on Monday and Friday. And with a state superintendent meeting on this Friday, I basically had Monday to work with. Since I can't get to all buildings today, I'm going to do a podcast providing the information I share with you with those schools who I was not able to visit. Podcasts are something I'm considering doing monthly, as a matter of fact, or bi-monthly to keep all of you informed. I'll be interested to see how well it's received. If it's something that you feel is valuable, I'll continue to do that. You see, I really value coming out into the schools and personally welcoming everyone back for the school year. Generally, I share information about summer accomplishments and any new initiatives for the school year. And I try to identify any issues that we might be facing. I plan to try and address those things within the 10 to 15 minutes I believe this podcast will take. I'd like to begin with the end of last year. We celebrated with 22 members of our team who retired after long careers in Queen Anne's County. When I looked at the overall impact of those individuals leading us, I found we had lost 518 years of experience. As I'm sure you recognize, that is a lot of knowledge and expertise for our school system to lose and to have to replace. We can always replace individuals, but we can't replace that individual time that they had with us. That loss, plus the additional positions in our budget, resulted in the number of transfers within our school system and the addition of 48 staff who are new to our county. We actually have some of those new staff in every school except Churchill Elementary School and Stevensville Middle School. And of those 48 new staff, 28 of them are brand new teachers, and they will need your support. I told them last week that they are going to have support from our teachers because we have the best teachers in the state. I'm excited to say 12 of the 28 people are teachers who graduated from our school system as students. What does that say about our school system and the quality of the individuals who graduated? It says a lot. When I met with principals two weeks ago, I noted that it might seem like there's a lot on our plates this year, but I emphasize that each of those things that are heaped there are there to help us reach our number one goal, high student achievement. It's always been our number one goal. And as a school system, we're going into year four of implementing Maryland College and Career Readiness Standards, standards that are there to provide a more rigorous program for our students. I recognize it's been tough the last several years, because we've lacked some of the resources we needed for you to use. What I have heard back from many of you, though, is that you know teachers from other counties who you've worked with on some state committees or seen at conferences, and you can't get over how much more staff in this school system know than those in the surrounding counties or those that you've met from across the state. I agree. That is something that we should be proud of. And I know that we have someone at the State Department Dr. Jack Smith, who is the um, Chief Academic Officer, and he called the other day to ask a favor of us because he wants us to share some best practices, and what he said was, I'm calling you because your staff have a better understanding of what Maryland College and Career Readiness Standards are. And that's really exciting to me because I think that um, when he visited us last year, he recognized the quality of individuals that sit around our table and help us prepare the programs that we have. And that, my friends, is a reflection of the knowledge, understanding, and experience that you have with this new curriculum and the instructional shifts that we've had to make. And the good news is, supervisors working with teachers and curriculum teams 
have put a lot of curriculum units and useful resources on the curriculum loft, making them fully accessible to teachers. This summer, those teams also began converting our assessments to online models using Performance Matters, the Unify system, and that should be an excellent support to everyone. Your data will be there immediately. And that is good news for us. Even with full implementation of MCCRS, which was not aligned with MSA, we still did fairly well on the final administration of the MSA assessment. We stayed in the top quarter or third of the state, depending on content area. And that was due to the quality of instruction that you provided to those students. As far as MSA is concerned, that assessment is gone forever. This year, we will implement PARC at all levels, elementary, middle, and high. And that assessment progresses, and how that assessment progresses is yet to be seen. Most of you are aware that we piloted it in one classroom in each school. We didn't choose the classroom, nor did we receive any data or feedback regarding the assessment or the performance of our students. It was only administered to give the test developers information about that test, its validity and its reliability. At least a few teachers and students in our school system had the opportunity to experience it firsthand, and that knowledge is something they can carry forward with them to this year. We're also going into our second year of SLOs. I'm very grateful to our task force, comprised primarily of teachers, who continue to give us direction and feedback on our implementation of that. There will be some modifications to what we did this past year, and we'll make all of the necessary information available online to reduce the amount of paper and the ease of you sharing it with appropriate people, like your principal or your supervisor. And we will also be posting assessments on the curriculum loft for teachers to see as they're developing their SLOs this year. Again, that should be another support for you. We had a great ending to last year with the technology conference, and we look forward to building on what we learned at that conference. Evaluations indicated the conference met the needs of most people who attended. And I think that's because it met all skill levels of development. And Christina Schindler and the 70 teachers who agreed to be presenters impressed all of us. And actually, I heard so many people who went to a conference the following week at Washington College repeat over and over again, this conference at Washington College, put on by the state, doesn't even touch what Christina and our own staff shared in this county. Mr. Simmons, county commissioner, as many of you know, attended our two-day conference, and he was very impressed with what we were able to do. He is so proud of the work that teachers are doing that he's talked about it at several of the commissioner meetings. And he mentioned it again when he and I met with Dr. Lowry this past week. He was bragging about teachers and teacher leadership in Queen Anne's County. I shared with you at the technology conference that we would be purchasing HP Elite Revolve laptops, laptop tablets for most of our teachers. I'm pleased to say they will be delivered beginning the week of September 3rd. Google Chromebooks for middle school students will be available two weeks later. Three implementation teams were established this summer. Policies and procedures, communication, and professional development. I mentioned these committees at our two-day conference and asked if you were interested in serving on one of them, please let me know. I did have several people who did that. And then when I needed to have some additional people on the committee, I turned to principals and supervisors to nominate others to be invited. On each of those committees, we have included teachers, several parents, and several students. As soon as the information from each group is shared with the board, it's going to go back out to teachers for additional feedback so that we have your input prior to them being finalized. We also plan to send out a short survey regarding your technology skills needs regarding laptop, tablet. This is information that will be used primarily in your building to help plan training that will focus on the needs in your building. We will also look at some things that might go across the system centrally to see if there are some ways that we can provide and stretch that training across more than one school. There are different levels of Google certification. First level is free. And we will be sending out more information to everyone about this. It deals with calendars, email, and Google Docs, things that we're all using at this time. A higher level
level of Google certification is available and we plan to have a core group of people get trained in that, perhaps two people from each building. These people can get trained and then be coaches back in their own schools. One of the things the PD committee looked at was a way of supporting teachers and what we learned is the best support comes from among our own staff. And if we have some people that have that expertise, it's going to be much more appropriate because they'll be right there in your building and be able to help you. Remember, we know that our long-term goal is to integrate technology into our instruction on a daily basis. This is something that we're going to be working on over time. I am aware that some people are more comfortable than others in using technology as part of their instructional program. And I'm going to make sure we have opportunities to ease into that this year. The PD implementation team is reviewing how we can get ample support to those who need it. As I mentioned earlier, our middle schools will have Google Chromebooks as soon as we have established our procedures. 1,965 Chromebooks are due to be delivered to us in Queen Anne's County on August 27th. They'll be delivered to schools as soon as we feel we're ready, but at least by the end of September. Middle schools will also have digital tech books from Discover Learning in the areas of social studies and science. The decision was made following a trial we ran in some classrooms in each of our middle schools and a couple of our elementary schools. Additionally, we'll be implementing Agile Minds, a web-based math resource program at the middle school levels. I worked on that the other night and thought it was fantastic. I think you'll really enjoy it when you see it. Finally, we're having Streaming Plus available for all teachers in our school system. This is the United Streaming, some of you may recall from earlier years but it's on steroids. It contains so many more resources for your use, things that are even related to our college and career readiness standards. It will be available within the first several weeks of school. It also comes with training that we will make sure we build in this year. So to summarize this portion of my comments, all of these initiatives, MCCRS implementation, park assessments, SLOs, HPLE, laptop tablets for teachers, Google Chromebooks for middle school students, and digital tech books. They're all strategies or tools for increasing the rigor of the curriculum and assessing the performance and accomplishments of our students. Goal one, engaging students and motivating them to achieve at higher levels of performance. Goal one, enabling us to provide blended instruction, further motivating our students. Goal one, in other words, they are all strategies, resources, and or tools that we hope will support you and are aimed at increasing the performance by noting we have some interesting times ahead of us. We will have three new board members in November. This is the first time for us since our elected board was elected. At large, Arlene Taylor or John McQueen. District 2, Jennifer George or Steve Klein. District 1, Annette DiMaggio is unopposed. We will have an opportunity, I hope, to have some forums where we will get to go out and ask them what their beliefs are about education, how they feel about our school system, how they feel about supporting our budget. This is something I think is every teacher's and every staff person's responsibility. And I encourage you to go on the website and read about each of these individuals and ask questions and then make an informed decision. About 70% of our people live in the county. You are voters here. You have some opportunity to have some impact on what happens. Now, in addition to the board members, we also have to remember that there are going to be four new commissioners. District 4 is unopposed, Mark Anderson. District 3 is Robert Bucky, or Bucky Bucky, and Phil Dumanow is going to be, is a write-in, I believe. At large is Jim Moran and Suzanne Hogan. District 2 is Fred McNeil or Steve Wilson. And District 1 is unopposed, Mr. Paul Comfort. I think it's important that we take time to really think about these individuals, to go on the website, to take a look at them, to see what they stand for. I think it's up to you, as voters in this county, many of you are, to go back out when we have forums and ask these individuals what they want for their county. Hopefully they'll say they want a good education system. One of the ways I have of getting information from you is to do a roundtable. 
And I hope that you know you will participate in this year's roundtables, or if you believe there's a better forum for me to get information from you, that you will at least email me and let me know what that forum is. If you think podcasts are really the answer to be a way for you to get information, I'm happy to do more of those. But I think you need to stay informed about all areas of education, not just about the commissioners and the elected board, but about what's going on in our school system. And if you have questions, I hope that you're going to ask me about what, what's going on with that so that I can get information back to you. I am looking forward so much to seeing you in school when students are there. I plan to ride a bus the first day, several buses I hope, and be able to arrive with the kids. Um, and the reason I do that is I like to see how excited students are and hear their chatter on the way to school. And I also like to be in schools that first day just to see the excitement that's on the faces of not only the students, but of you, our staff, because you do look like you're excited about having students back. I wish you the best for this year, and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.